Hello students, welcome again. Let's start the last chapter of unit first electrostatics and the chapter name is Capacitance. The very first topic that we are we all are covering today is conductors and insulators, free charges and bound charges inside a conductor. So let's for uh, discuss the introduction first. For the introduction, what can we say? Introduction. As we all know, the materials can be broadly classified under two heads. One is materials can be classified as broadly conductors and insulators. Insulators. So now let's discuss what are conductors. Conductors. Conductors are basically those materials which allow the smooth passage of electrons through it or which allow the conduction of electric current through it. So those sub materials are called conductors. Like for example, silver, aluminium, iron, copper, etc. These all are conductors. So basically, what happens inside the conductor that allows the smooth flow of electrons through them? So basically, looking into the atomic theory, every substance has got its fundamental uh, unit as atom. And that atom also consists of positively charged protons surrounded by revolving electrons equal in number in different orbits. So as the, suppose this is an atom of the conductor and it comprises positively charged nucleus and here we have uh, electrons like this. Suppose here we have uh, uh, electrons in its outermost orbit. Now these electrons revolve around this nucleus. So as the distance increases from the nucleus, so obviously as the Coulomb's electrostatic force of attraction decreases and these outermost revolving electrons, uh, the materials in which this uh, last orbit or which is called valence electron, they are not completely filled, they are half filled and half empty. So such materials are called conductors and here these electrons are so weakly bound with the parent nucleus that even at room temperatures or with the application of some external small amount of electric field, these can be freed from this force of attraction given by the nucleus to it. So hence these outermost electrons are supposed to be free charges as I said free charges free charges electrons so these free electrons when it's freed from this uh, nucleus freed from this force of attraction so they move inside the surface of the conductor freely here and there and they form a cloud uh, cloud or, or they form a gas of electrons. So these are such free electrons which can roam here and there inside the surface of metal but cannot leave the surface of metal. So hence what can we say? Uh, in the presence of in the presence of what happens when we apply the external field. So in the presence of external field these free electrons which were roaming here and there uh, in random motion, in random fashion inside the surface of metal, they will be drifted opposite in direction to the applied electric field. So the electric field makes them uh, move in a certain fixed direction and hence so uh, these 
unidirectional moving electrons constitute the flow of current along the direction of applied electric field so here uh, let's have in case of uh, in case what happens in case of electrolyte electrolyte are, are also conductors supposed to be conductors because they conduct electricity so inside the electrolyte uh, the positive as well as negative both charges take part in conduction and they are greatly influenced by the application of external electric field and also they are influenced by so called chemical forces so those two forces applied electric field force and the chemical force both influence the motion of those positively and negatively charges uh, inside the electrolyte in but in case of conductors only the these free charges free electrons take part in the conduction whereas the positively charged ion along with nucleus that remain at rest they don't have any freedom to move at all they remain fixed at their own position so now let's discuss about insulators insulators so basically insulators are substances which do not allow the passage of electrons to them which do not have free electrons in them so such substances are called insulators like glass rubber wood etc these all are examples of insulators so in case of when when these uh, when the charges are imparted by say rubbing the surface of such insulators so those charges remain at rest remain static on the surface of such uh, substances but when a substance permits but when the substance permits the effect of this um, electric field uh, let me write this so when a substance permits the passage of the passage of electrical passage of electrical effect electrical effect or you can say influence it without allowing without allowing actually the current flow through it without allowing current to pass is called is called dielectric dielectric so students dielectrics are basically actually they, these dielectrics will be very frequently used as the lecture uh, proceeds as we move on so inside the capacitance between the plates the material will be just placed to increase the capacity of the capac uh, capacitor so dielectrics are basically those substances which allow the passage of electrical influence to them but do not conduct the current as such so such insulators are called dielectrics so let's have some facts associated with conductors what are the uh, important things that we must take care of uh, while dealing with conductors so first fact the 
इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड और इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक फील्ड विद इन द सर्फेस ऑफ कंडक्टर इज ऑलवेज जीरो दैट मीन्स चार्जेस ओनली रिसाइड ऑन द आउटर सर्फेस दे डू नॉट मूव इन साइड द सर्फेस ऑफ द कंडक्टर सो फर्स्ट आई मस्ट फाइट इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक फील्ड इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक फील्ड इन साइड अ कंडक्टर a conductor is zero so this is first fact now the second fact we must say ah uh, actually here if someone asks why the electrostatic field inside the conductor is supposed to be zero so you can just uh, use the gauss's law to prove that the electrostatic field inside the surface of the conductor is zero so there e dot d is flux equals to charge enclosed within a hypothetical gaussian surface taken inside the surface of the conductor um charge upon epsilon not times then now uh, you can see as the charge inside that hypothetical surface is zero and hence the flux would be zero so therefore you can just derive or come to the conclusion that e inside is equal to zero so this way you can justify the statement okay for the second fact let's move on let's see how the conductor behaves when kept inside the electric field so behavior of conductor in electrostatic field i must write e suppose we have two parallel plates positively charged and negatively charged so the electric field exists uniform in between and suppose we place a surface of conductor like this and here the field is directed from positive towards negative like this so the electric field will produce the effect on the surface of conductor as well as inside the surface of conductor so the effect is the charges inside the surface of conductors mainly negatively charges free charges they will be attracted towards this side due to the positive affinity of field and here the negative charges will get accumulated and the positive ions will be here on the next side so this will <coughs> make the induced electric field and the induced electric field will be along this direction and the electric field applied will be as usual this is applied electric field this is e not the applied electric field so the induction takes place inside the surface of conductor so long the the net electric field e not plus e i induced electric field becomes zero as soon as this resultant electric field inside the surface of conductor becomes zero a static situation is reached a uh, a static situation is reached and now the electric field at any point inside the surface of the conductor will be zero as we said earlier electric field inside a conductor is zero now for the third characteristic or third fact about this conductor we can say the electric field 
at any point on the surface of the conduct charged conductor is always normal to the surface so let me write this a uh, third number the electric or electrostatic i must say electrostatic field is normal to the surface of of a charged conductor at every point okay now let me assume the electrostatic field is not normal rather it is making certain angle with the tangent drawn at that point suppose this is the surface of metal and here at this point suppose we have a normal to this surface and the electric field is not here normal rather it is at theta angle so a component will be seen along this tangent e cos theta and the next would be e sin theta so obviously this component will drive or will apply <coughs> or will exert a force to uh, move the charge kept at this point and will drive the charge along its own direction as we know there is no shifting of charge placed at this point or placed any point on the surface of conductor so it implies that this component has to be zero and this component uh, equal to zero implies that cos theta is zero and cos theta zero implies that theta is 90 so it clearly indicates that this electric field will be normal to this surface at this point so this way you can just prove it or you can just have a justification towards this now for the next we can say fourth number the interior of a conductor cannot have any excess charge so let me write this the interior of the interior of a conductor can have no excess charge in the static position in the static position static position is reached when equal number of positive charges and negative charges they are uh, separated to a significant distance inside the conductor when kept in an external field so at that particular position no excess charge can reside within the electric field as we have seen the resultant electric field inside the or in the interior of the conductor is zero and if the electric field is zero it directly implies that excess charge in the interior of conductor is zero so this way you can reason it this point now for the fifth fact you can say the electrostatic potential inside the surface of the conductor is constant at a, at every point or at any point and is just equal to the amount of potential at the surface of the conductor so let me write this of uh, the electrostatic potential
इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक पोटेंशियल इज कॉन्स्टेंट थ्रू आउट द कॉन्स्टेंट थ्रू आउट द वॉल्यूम ऑफ थ्रू आउट द वॉल्यूम ऑफ द कंडक्टर एंड हैज द सेम वैल्यू एज इन साइड सेम वैल्यू एज ऑन इट्स सरफेस on its surface actually for this you can uh, for the verification of this fact you can say since electric field is a negative of potential gradient now e inside or electric field in the interior of the conductor is zero so you can just take it zero dv upon dr and hence you can say v equals to constant so this way you can reason it this okay now for the sixth fact about the conductor we can say the electrostatic field at the surface of a conductor is sigma upon epsilon not times n cap n cap is the unit vector at that point normal to the surface so let me write this fact <coughs> sixth fact electric field electric field at the surface of a charged conductor is sigma upon epsilon not times n cap let's prove it how this electric field value electric field has got this value at the surface of a charged conductor now for that suppose we have the surface of a charged conductor and let we have a pill box small cylinder kind of gaussian surface a part of which lies inside this conductor and the next part of that lies out of this surface of conductor so let me just draw it this is a pill box kind of hypothetical gaussian surface that i am drawing here and say this is uh, at this point the electric field will be directed out of this and the area vector would also be directed around this this is the electric field at this point and the area vector normal to this surface now here this curved surface will have electric field along this uh, electric field will be along this as usual but the area vector will be around this making 90 so no flux will be contributed by this part and this part is lying within the within the surface of the conductor and we know the electric field in the interior of the conductor is zero so no flux will be contributed by this bottom uh lying inside the surface of the conductor uh, surface of hypothetical gaussian surface and the curved surface will also not contribute any amount of flux so now we can directly have the flux uh associated with the topmost outer lying surface so we now write using gauss's law using gauss's law we can have e dot ds equal to sigma 
ds upon epsilon naught. Now, what is the sigma ds? Sigma is surface charge density of this conductor, and ds is area. So here, what amount of surface charge density is sigma? So this is the charge enclosed by this Gaussian surface. Now we can say this uh, ds and ds will get cancelled. So writing it in vector form, vector E equals to sigma upon epsilon naught times n cap. So this way you can justify. Okay, now for the last fact. Electrostatic shielding. How can we uh, means what is the electrostatic shielding? Suppose a conductor with small cavity. Now, if the charges are given to the surface of conductor, so those charges will get uniformly spread on the cavity, outer surface of cavity, and no charges will be seen in the interior of that conductor having cavity. Or its surface. So, in this way, the electric field or influence of those charges in the interior of that cavity will be zero, and hence anything which is uh, predicted from the effect of external electric field uh, is called electrostatic shielding. So, the making the effect of externally existing electrostatic field uh, zero to uh, a point inside any surface or inside any boundary is called electrostatic shielding and this effect is basically used to protect very sensitive electrical instruments while using them in the areas of hazard, uh, electrically hazardous. Okay, students, so let's have next topic capacitors. Capacitors is basically the assembly of or the uh, combination of two conductors separated through a very small distance having insulating material in between. So, how can we say uh, it is a system it is a system of two conductors separated by An insulator. Okay, now suppose this is a conductor and we have this to be another conductor and say this uh, first conductor is having plus Q charge having potential as V1 so these are charges on the surface of first conductor and now the next charge, next conductor has got negative charges with potential say V2 and these are charges on the surface of next conductor. So this assembly having insulating material in between will be called capacitor. Okay, so now let's have perfect capacitor perfect capacitor is having two same size having same area of met, uh, these conductors or sheets separated through very small distance having insulating material in between them is called a perfect capacitor and the dielectric medium of this capacitor if at all doesn't allow any current to pass through so that's called perfect capacitor let's have next topic 
charging a capacitor how the capacitor gets charged let's see suppose we have two parallel plates and these are being connected through a battery having emf with a switch s now this is say emf of the battery now let me call this plate a and this plate b the moment this switch is closed the positive charges get accumulated here and negative charges get accumulated here actually what happens when the switch s is closed the electrons move to this and reach to this metal surface uh reach to the surface of plate b and those negative charges start drifting by the application of uh force of repulsion the electrons present on the surface of this uh plate a now those electron through this wire moves and uh enter into the positive terminal of battery so this induction or this charging of uh or this accumulation of positive charges here and negative charges here continues so long as the potential in between the capacitor is just equal and opposite to this emf of the battery so i must write here the flow of current or you can say charging of capacitor charging of capacitor continues continues until the potential difference across the plates across the plates is equal and opposite to the emf of battery so this way the capacitor gets fully charged and when it gets fully charged the potential here is equal but opposite to this emf of the battery and no current flows through this capacitor and capacitor stops the flow of current through it mm -hmm. so let's see what is the relation between q and v in case of capacitor when capacitor is being charged so relation between q and v so as we have okay so now relation between q and v as we have electric field proportional to q electric field between the plates of capacitor will be proportional to the charges on the surface of plates now also we know the potential is also proportional to q or mathematically what can we write this q proportional to v or mathematically mathematically we can say q proportional to v now when this q is written with equal sign we need to put a constant of proportionality and that constant of proportionality here is c times v 
or q upon v equals to c so this constant of proportionality is basically the capacitance of the capacitor whose value depends on c is the capacitance which depends on which depends on the geometrical configuration geometrical configuration geometrical configuration means what shape size of the metal uh, surface forming capacitor so geometrical configuration means shape size also the separation separation between the plates and also the nature of insulating material nature of insulating material so these are the fact which influence the capacity of the capacitor okay students let's see symbolically how we just represent the fixed value of capacitor and the variable value of capacitor of fixed capacitor fixed capacitor we use the symbol two parallel lines of same length and for variable capacitor we use two parallel lines having this arrow so this signifies variable capacitor now the relationship that we have seen now that q upon v equals to c this relationship holds for a fixed or a constant or a maximum fixed value of electric potential so v has got upper limit it's not like we keep on increasing potential we keep on charging the capacitor for indefinitely there's a fixed constant value maximum value of v that the capacitor can take and that is uh, the condition of or that is the value of v for which this relationship q upon v equals to c holds good now what happens if we keep on increasing v beyond that upper limit so let me define the term dielectric strength dielectric strength strength dielectric strength dielectric you all are aware basically the insulating material which is generally kept between the plates of capacitor so uh, that has got some certain strength uh, so dielectric strength is basically that amount of maximum electric applied external field with which the dielectric can withstand without losing its insulating property so that maximum applied value of electric field is called dielectric strength for that insulating material so if beyond that the electric field is increased so that insulating property will get lost and the current starts flowing from one plate of the capacitor to the other and that capacitor is no longer a perfect capacitor so let's have next topic principle of a capacitor 
on what principle the capacitor works let's see suppose we have two plates plate a and plate a is already having positive charges on its surface now suppose this plate a positively charged plate a is brought close to plate b now this bringing of charged plate positively charged plate close to b makes electrical induction here on the surface of metal plate b and negative charges are induced in the inner region or in the left side of this plate b and positive are induced on the right face of this plate b so this process lowers the potential of plate e now as we have q upon v equals to c so with this relation so if the potential of metal plate a lowers it means the capacity to further uh, take few more charges on its surface of plate a increases now for the next case if what do we do if we just now have this uh, plate a and plate b and if say this uh, plate b is a thin or grounded so the grounding of this plate b will make these positive charges getting neutralized getting disposed of safely to the ground and hence only negative charges are seen on this uh, left side or in the inner region of plate b so students this grounding or earthing of metal plate b will further lower the potential of plate a and the lowering of potential of plate a will further increase the capacity of plate a so this way few more charges can be accumulated on the capacitor so this is the principle of capacitor so next topic uses of capacitors what are the uses of capacitors in electrical circuits especially those uh, circuits comprising in inductance for the smooth functioning of them when current flows without sparking uh, the functioning of Uh, that inductance circuit may take place so for that smoothing purpose we use capacitor in that then in the ignition system of automobile engines also we use capacitors then in radio tuning circuit we use these capacitors so these are few uh, applications of capacitors in right the uses in electrical circuits electrical circuits now for the second case we can say in the ignition in the ignition system of automobile engine ignition system of automobile engine now for the third case as i said in radio circuits for tuning purpose okay so let's move on let's have now units of capacitors the units of capacitance in cgs esu electrostatic unit in cgs esu we have stack farad stack farad so one stack farad 
is equal to one stat coulomb upon one stat volt. So this is the uh, stat coulomb in its basic fundamental units. Uh, now in SI, in SI we have farad and one farad equals to one coulomb per one volt. So students with this we end up today's session. So do like and subscribe the channel.